Hey everyone, Mr. Shatter here to talk about exponential growth and decay a little bit more. This video is specifically going to focus on reviewing some important formulas you need to be familiar with and also applying the law of exponential change to a real world scenario. So first important formula is your investment formula. A is going to represent the amount of money at the end of the investment cycle. P represents the initial amount of the investment. R represents the interest rate, always as a decimal. And N represents the, number of, represents the number of times your money is compounded. So like quarterly is four times per year, so N would be four. Uh, Semi-annually, for example, would be two times per year, so N would be two, so on and so forth. The next formula is also an investment formula, but this one's only used when you're compounded continuously. Okay, so when you're compounded continuously. Um, in this one, we just usually call PERT. A equals PE raised to the RT. You only ever use this formula if the directions say the investment is compounded continuously, which means that the amount of money is compounded at every second. Uh, this statement you have to be familiar with. If the rate of change is proportional to the amount present, that means that dy dt is equal to some constant k times y. And this statement means the problem is exponential. The last one we're going to look at is just your, you know, your general half-life, doubling, tripling formula. Um, at the top it just says uh, A, which is the amount of the substance left, is equal to P, which is your initial. If this is a half-life problem, one half goes in the parentheses, and then the exponent is T divided by the time it takes to cut in half. Um, in general, you can kind of memorize this format. Um, where A is equal to P, and then in parentheses is what's happening. So like if it's doubling or tripling, you'd put a 2 here, um, or a 3 if it's tripling or whatever. And then T divided by the bottom is the time it takes to double or triple or have or whatever it's doing. Let's try an example. Example 7 says, at the beginning of the summer, the population of a hive of bald-faced hornets, which are actually wasps, is growing at a rate proportional to the population. Okay, very important. Once they told me that it's growing at a rate proportional, that means uh, since dy dt is equal to kt, that means the growth is exponential. The growth is exponential. Okay, so that's really important moving forward. They told me the rate is proportional, which means I can assume dy dt is equal to kt. And that is just an indication to me that this is an exponential growth problem. Let's keep reading. From a population of 10 on May 1st, the number of hornets grows to 50 in 30 days. Interesting. I'm going to write that down. So the population uh, grows by a factor of 5, by a factor of 5 in 30 days. Okay? That's important. I'm going to, I'm going to need this fact in a minute. Last sentence, um, if the growth continues to follow the same model, hence proportional growth, okay, uh, how many days after May 1st will the population reach 100? All right, so this shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to use my formula just on the a previous slide a minute ago, and that formula is just that A is equal to uh, the initial value, which is 10. We're going to multiply by 5, since the uh, scale factor or the growth factor is 5. And we're going to raise it to the power of T divided by 30 because it took 30 days for the population to grow by a factor of 5. And if I plug 100 in for A, my job is to solve for T. So these problems are very familiar. I'm sure you remember these in pre-calc. Um, if you want to solve for T, first thing you could do is divide by 10. And that's going to give you 10 is equal to 5 raised to the T over 30. And there's a number of ways to solve these problems. My favorite way is to take the natural log of both sides because on the left you'll have natural log 10, and on the right, when you take the natural log of this thing, because it has an exponent, uh, the t over 30 actually just comes right down to the coefficient, which is nice. So you get ln 10 equals t over 30 ln 5. Um, and what that means is that t is simply equal to 30 times ln 10 over ln 5. And if you use a calc, it'll approximately give you 42.920, which is essentially 43 days. So approximately 43 days after May 1st, the population of those hornets, which uh, were horrible, absolutely horrible things, uh, will reach 100, and we're going to move our house to somewhere else.